How have you been? Oh, I've been okay. Been hanging in there. Good, good. So uh, you wanted to talk about uh, our presidents today, huh? Yeah. You know, right now, you know, it's a big race coming up in June for the Bronx Borough president. So, you know, I see a lot of people that's on that uh, platform right there. So I want to uh, speak a little bit on that. Yeah. Well, let me let me just show uh, the screen and see if there's anybody I'm missing here. Of uh, These are the candidates running for... Uh, let's see. These are the candidates running for borough president in in the Bronx. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. Is anybody there that's missing? Uh, no, nah, not nobody that I see. Okay. All right. So. You know, uh, well, you know, that's going to be a race, but I really don't see too many, uh, like, qualified candidates in there that, you know, really got the poten potential to go on and like really uplift the whole borough you know i see like a little like little sprinkle here and there but not, ain't nobody in there that's really like you could say that is could be held accountable for uplifting the bronx well you can say that pretty much about all the candidates running for mayor as well <laughs> except for maybe you know stringer who's been around for a while but Basically, yeah, Eric and Eric Adams. I get them to the uh, up a notch on that. Yeah. But when you come to this Bronx Borough thing, I mean, like, you can put a couple of community leaders that could get in there and uh, take them out. That got more clout in the community, and then put in more, you know, did more things for the people in the community than every last person that's on that list. Mm -hmm. Who who in the list are you uh, uh, are you expecting to win? Uh, well, you know, you're looking at that list, I don't think none of them should win, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you got, <laughs> well, to tell you the truth, but, you know, unless you want to go on some of the new guys that's just coming out and get them a first-time shot, you know, like Sammy and them just coming out. But as far as you go on the people that already done uh, been out here, and if you're going on, let me see what you did, and I'm going to vote on you depending on what you did, and I wouldn't vote on none of them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely but none of them. You know, the guy, Lewis, he got all type of allegations against him, you know, so I don't even know why he's still in there. He should just gracefully bow down and just get up out there. Then you got uh, Cabrera, you know, like, he's been around for the longest. You know, I don't see no change in the community where I live at, you know, and he, he the, uh, the councilman from the community where I live at, and I don't see nothing. You know, it's been the same way, the same right around his area where his uh, office is at, been towed up with drugs and K2 and murders and et cetera, et cetera, yeah. you know? Well, you, and, you, took me, you took me to their offices and there were homeless people outside. Yeah. And uh, same thing with, uh, with your, your new congressman up there. Uh, yeah, um, so, with Richie Torres. Yeah, Richie Torres. Yeah, uh, Jose Rivera showed you the same thing. You know, these the, the area and where they cover and what they are, the leaders in that district is, is, is tore up. They haven't done nothing, you know. And then you go down to uh, even Vanessa Gibson, you know, you go down to her where the projects is at. There's always somebody getting killed in there consistently. You know, you go on 170th and College Avenue, somebody's always getting killed there or shot, you know. They just have four, four, three, four people who got shot. Right on the concourse at 170, broad daylight, but four o'clock. You know, it's like a few blocks from where your office is at. You can't even control that. So, what make me think that you control the whole borough? You know? And then you come down to uh, Natalia. She's not even from the Bronx. So, you don't even know nothing about the Bronx. So, how could you be like in control of an area that you have zero knowledge of? You don't know nothing about the Bronx. You know? If somebody gave her a million dollars right now and said, you know, drive around the Bronx and go to here and go to here and gave her 20 address and just put it in her hand on the list and said, you got to go to all these addresses. You can't lose, use no Google map or nothing. Just go. She couldn't get there. Yeah. And we see that carpet baggers usually don't do very much. So, well, I... yeah, you know, we need, if somebody going to jump out the window and tell me you're the Bronx borough president, I think, first of all, you should be from the Bronx. You know, you should have some type of background born or raised or something where you really know when you've been through it 
So you speaking from experience and not just from a whole bunch of, you know, a lip professor, just from talk. Right. In, in your opinion, what is probably the three biggest problems in the Bronx that they need to address? Uh, first of all, it's homelessness. Right. Homelessness is everywhere. Then it's drug alcohol dependent. Then it's mental health. You know, you got people walking around mentally ill and there's no type of outreach, there's no type of help. And then we got to go with teen homelessness. Then we got to go with, you know, get a teen some, uh, in the youth, some, some job trades, some job resource centers. You know, we have nothing. You know, you go, you look in Harlem, you go to Harlem, and I always tell them they got to, you know, the brothers that, and the sisters that live in Harlem, y'all got to be thankful because this is a lot of programs, it's a lot of churches, there's a lot of things that will get behind your program and push you if they see you trying to help the people. In the Bronx, they ain't trying to do nothing. They just sit up in the office and talk and have parties and, and you know, it's a big old party. Yeah. Uh, has the uh, the crime rate gone up recently in, in the Bronx? Like it has in Brooklyn? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, 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 it's getting worse every day, you know, and all you see is people standing up and trying to take position. Like even Richie Torres to down to the uh, Congress. How did you go to Congress? What did you do? And, and like, who did, who, who's electing these people? Like, you know, what is the protocol? You know, like, like who, you know, who, who, there's no way in the world you could have left the Bronx. If you ask the people from the Bronx, like, what did you do? You made a bunch of promises that you was going to put all these community centers and save the neighborhood after they killed Junior. That was all for TV. And that was all just for you to get the position that you got right now in Congress. But now when you go back to the community and ask us, the people of, that live in the community, what work did you put in? They're going to say, you didn't do nothing. Yeah. You know, it still ain't no, it still ain't nothing for uh, the Junior situation and all that that could prevent that from happening again. Absolutely nothing, you know? And then they had the Fresh Air Fund come out, and uh, he, he took a lot of credit for that. But, you know, I've been out since I was, you know, I've been in the Bronx all my life. I know that the politicians don't have nothing to do with the Fresh Air Fund. Yeah. What, what about the, the pandemic? Uh, have there been vaccine centers set up in the Bronx? Uh, you see the Bronx Borough president on the news here and there talking about he got a vaccine center in Yankee Stadium and Bronx Zoo. But you never see these people. These people was all talk online. Like, go up to the average Bronx per person that's in the Bronx, a resident, and ask them, besides TV, did you ever see the Bronx Borough president? They're going to say no. You ask them, have you ever seen the, any one of these guys that run out and say that uh, they the leader of your community, the councilman, the assemblyman? They're going to say no. Or the councilwoman, the assemblywoman, they're going to say no. I don't know. They don't know because they never made themselves their presence known. I'm telling you this. I've been in, born and raised in the Bronx for 53 years. I can take the politicians that I've seen on the street on my hands. I can put them out. You know what I'm saying? And even after me doing the work that I do, and now that I'm deeply involved and I know who's who, I've probably seen them before and didn't know who's who. But now, you know, I'm fully aware of who's who. You don't see these people nowhere. Yeah. When I when I walk through your neighborhood with you uh, in the fall, uh, I, there must have been a dozen people that came up to say hello to you. I was amazed at, at the response that you were getting just walking down the street. So people know in your community, you know, where you're at. Um, it's it's a shame that the politicians can't get that same response. Yeah, you know, they can't, you know, they actually, they really don't, you know. Like, uh, I went to a lunch one day with uh, Fernando Cabrera about three years ago. We was a couple of blocks from his office, but everybody that came inside the restaurant was, was came to tell me hi. You know, hey, he came on, what's up, man? Yo, yo, what's up, hi, my community, what's up? Nobody, you know, people don't know these people, man. They don't, they don't make themselves known. No. You, know, you would think they, and, you would think and, that that would might them, might wake them up to do the things that need to be done to uplift the people in the community and also to uplift the community. What are what are you and your organization trying to do uh, at the at the present time? Well, right now, you know, I'm teaching in uh, high school. You know, uh, teach the kids how to write grants and about our mental health education. I'm also volunteering, you know, working inside the shelter system, 
you know, doing our resources and networking and uh, providing, you know, putting people in the situations that they need to be in and uh, providing the things that they need. Uh, you know, I still do the things for the youth and uh, anti-violence and just doing like mental health outreach and things like that, you know, trying to build that bridge between the youth and adults. Yeah. The, not, not long ago, I did a, an interview with uh, this uh, guy that was running a shelter. I was visiting a friend in, uh, in, a, in Canada and this guy was running the shelter and i asked him what's the demographic of the people in the shelter and he basically told me it was a third of homeless people a third of drug addiction and then a third of mental health issues uh you know with all the money that's being spent on on the pandemic and the relief uh, nothing is being spent on health care, uh, mm -hmm. and we really need that. Yeah, you know, and I, I would agree with him. It's like a mixture of uh, all three, you know, but it's like you can see where some people don't need to be there. You know, they need to be getting mental help, and then they get the right mental help that, you know, that they need, and uh, they wouldn't be in a situation that they're in. Mm -hmm. And then the same thing as far as the people that is, uh, that's heavily drugged, and alcohol addicted, you know, they provide these programs and these outreach uh, help for the people, they wouldn't be in the shelter, you know. And meanwhile, our governor has our governor has a ridiculous uh, program he wants to start where he wants the people to help themselves in mental illness. Now, that's a little, little naive as far as I'm concerned. Uh, to ask someone who has a definite problem to help themselves. Well, uh, first of all, that's the dumbest solution in the world. <laughs> Let's put it that way. You know, I do a lot of studying on uh, mental health with juveniles, also with adults. And uh, first of all, the person got to be, they got to accept that they have a problem. Exactly. So, and that's the biggest part. So how could I help myself if I'm in denial with myself? Mm -hmm. So, you know, usually, you know, it takes a little coaching from somebody or it takes like, you know, somebody that they know that they can trust or they feel comfortable speaking around. But for you to think that somebody that's uh, really with a mental health problem is going to help themselves and solve it themselves, and you have a problem. You have yeah. a real mental health problem. You know, you need to go and get himself mental evaluation. Cuomo has a problem with you know, Cuomo has a problem with spending the money on health care. Yeah, He's, and you got to look at it like, uh, you know, mental health go from somebody being mental, having mental illness could go from anxiety to bipolar to schizophrenic to somebody that's a kleptomaniac, somebody that's a pyromaniac. So, I mean, so how could you tell them to help yourself? You know, yeah. they like starting fives. How could they help themselves? They start fives every day, you know? Somebody who eat too much, somebody who eat too little, you know, you need... All these are mental health illnesses. So for you to expect somebody to go there and, and help themselves, how, all right, even if they help themselves, suppose they like uh, they bipolar and they need medication. Were they supposed to write their own uh, mm -hmm. medicine? You know, they, they own script. Like this guy's going outrageous. Yeah, it really is. It really is. You know, things that people will say instead of helping, you know, instead of coming up with a solution to try to help. You just going to throw out anything out there where they can help themselves. That's basically what he said, you know, help you help yourself. I ain't got, I don't got no answer for you. Yeah. Now, when, when you and I walked through your neighborhood, there were loads of people on the street, street vendors. Uh, is that still going on? Oh uh, yeah. You know, it's like everybody got to try to find out a way to try to survive, you know, yeah. especially they're not providing no job trade, training skills or programs in school. So you got a lot of the kids getting out of school and they done graduated and they don't really want to go to college. They trying to get some jobs. So, you know, a lot of the the, uh, the businesses gonna hire the young people. So then you got the medium age, the middle age and the older people that they still got to survive. They ain't got no jobs. You know, a lot of them ain't got no job training or got the job training, but just ain't got the, you know, job placement resources or things like that. They ain't got the money to get what they got to get at. So, you know, everybody got to try to create their own hustle. 
you know, most of those programs are on Zoom or some online thing, and so many people just don't have computers to be able to do that. One, you got to have your computer. Two, you got to have computer using skills. Right. You know, and then three, a lot of them uh, courses that be online cost a lot of money. Three, four hundred dollars, three hundred, five hundred dollars, and people ain't got that. So it's right. like it's a whole bunch of issues that you putting them up to get something that should be right there for them to get. Yeah. You you would think that um, with uh, Biden coming out with uh, programs, and I, I I believe he's coming out soon with uh, uh, with a program to build the infrastructure which should mean jobs for construction workers primarily. Um, They've been building New York City for the last 52 years. Yeah, I, that's true. We still don't got a job. <laughs> right. You know, you know that, that, that's just like... You have to be connected. Cool. Yeah, yeah. it, it just sounds good. You know, you know how long they've been doing construction in New York City? They've done been building the same block for 30, 40 years. When, when I was a kid, way back in the 60s, I wanted to be a carpenter. So a friend of mine lived across the street from the carpentry school on 26th Street. So I called them one day and I asked them, well, how do I apply for the classes? And the woman on the other, the other side of the phone said, well, you have to be part of the union. Well, how do I get into the union? Union. You have to graduate have, from the school. You have to graduate from the school. Right. So they said so, you in the circle. It's, exactly. Right. So... Yeah, it's a bunch of foolishness, you know. It's like uh, we got to provide for the people. We got to provide for the community. We most definitely got to provide for the youth, you know, so that they don't be a revolving door, so they don't go from the school to prison pipeline. And that is not happening. It's not happening in no community unless you go up to, like, Thrive's Neck, Riverdale, and things like that. Now, you know, they, they provide. But when you come down to here, like, Munhaven and the Morrisina community and the Fordham Road and yeah. ain't doing nothing, man. People do not, you know, we go years. When I say years, we go years, decades without a politician coming to our community. You know, they probably sneak through there when it's all election time, but as far as coming out and speaking to the people, it's the same thing here. I live a block from the, the Red Hook projects, and, and that people say that too. Meanwhile, yeah. they don't have gas or electric at times. Right now, if you came over to see the, uh, the facility, you would see that it's been torn up. All the trees have been taken down. All the playgrounds have been covered yeah. with some resiliency plan that who knows when it will be done. The baseball field across the street from the projects has been closed. This is the fourth year now. Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll see if it opens in springtime. But so, what, now, what do all these, where do all these kids supposed to go there? Yeah, if the they, basketball court is closed, if the, exactly. if, the baseball, if the baseball court is closed, if this is closed, if that is closed, if this is closed, where are they supposed to go? If they stand in front of the building, they're getting a, a summons for, uh, for lottery. So where are you supposed to go? Yeah. That's 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 the huge problem. Yeah. You know, you go down to Nitra and you have uh, the families pay rent and they living in the Nitra in the Nitra houses, but they can't go to the community center. The kids because the community center Nitra rents out the community center to private organizations. Like, so you're just forcing the kids into the street. Right. And the other it thing with Nitra is the, the other thing with Nitra is the rad system. The mayor is wanting wanting to privatize all of these buildings so he can wash it off his budget. And before that's not go, the way to go. Before you go inside the building, you got to come outside the building. You know, you got to walk in the building. So you outside before you inside. You got to go and they got to go. You know how many holes and all that that's inside them in the uh, grass in the projects? Mm -hmm. That's where all the rats is in. You know, they run in the building, but they live outside. Yeah. No, the, the weeks go by before they pick up the trash. Yeah, the the bins outside are always full. Yeah. So, you know, so what do we do? How do we fix this? Uh, first of all, we got to start electing the right people. We got to start coming out, and we got to start supporting the right people. 
we got to start funding the right people. You know, especially the people that got the communication and could build a bridge between the youth and the adults. See, the adults don't have no type of majority of them, especially the politicians. They have no type of connection with the youth. But the people that they see that have the connections with the youth, they don't support. So how much are you really trying to stop the violence and trying to educate and uplift the youth if you ain't supporting the people that the youth believe in? And that, the, you know, they want to support the people that they believe in and then expect to lose the youth to follow them. And that's not how it go. Right. The There's youth, no, the no level of respect from the them. People, the youth want you to invest in the people that they believe in and who they follow and who word that they respect. Just because you bringing in somebody new in a community and you funding them, that don't mean the community going to listen nor follow them right. at all. Because first of all, you're still a stranger. On top of that, though, I I'm, I'm strongly believe in community participation. I mean, yeah. I, I follow, I don't know if you've ever heard of Peter Kropotkin, who basically started uh, mutual aid in, in Russia. And uh, he was an anarchist, but not an anarchist in the, in the sense where he was burning buildings or anything like that. His yeah. philosophy was basically you had to do things on your own because government wasn't about to help you. And I think that's where we are in the country right now is that there needs to be much more participation from the people in the community. All right. Now, listen to this now. The community do participate. They participate with the people that they believe in, not the people that you plant there. That's what they mean. It's not that the community, the community is still doing what they're doing. They're just not a part of what you're doing. So you may come out there and you may have the big program. And you may have the big grant that the that the politician gave you, but the people who don't even know you, they're not following you, and they're not coming out and supporting you because they don't know you. They want you to support them, the people that's right here. They want you to support this organization with this person that they believe in, that they're going to follow. And now you got community participation. You just can't come in the community and throw whoever you want in the community and tell the people to, oh, yo, do this, that, and third, because that person don't know the problems that the community has and the, right. and the problem that, that that's consists within the community. The program yeah. that the community wants you to fund and that they all believe in, that's not the program that you fund. So it's yeah. like a thing called resistance. So they feel like, I'm not going there because you ain't supporting what we're doing. So why would we support what you're doing? If you support what we're doing, and we don't even believe in what you're doing because you don't know us. There's no type of connection. Mm. I totally agree with that. I mean, everything has to be grassroots. It has to be decided by the community and what the community wants. Yeah, and then the politics comes the later. How could you be uplifting the community, a part of the community, but you funding somebody from God knows where to come inside the community, right? That don't go like that. You know what I'm saying? That that don't even go like that in regular society. You know, in society, it's like, if you want to open up a business, nine, nine out of ten times your first business, you want to be like, well, I'm going to try to open it up around my community. Because you know that the people are going to support you. Because you live around there and you be around there, so you're like, I'm going to take my first chance, at least right here, before you branch out. You know, and it's the same thing, you know, when somebody is doing something and the whole community see you doing it and the whole community supports you. But then they see the people who actually doing something else, not supporting you, but they want you to support they people. It don't go like that. Yeah. One of the things that, I, that I'm looking at doing uh, is to go to each community in the city and look for the community leaders, people like you, to come up with a, f a few people that you think are also helpful or, or community leaders to have a discussion about what you think the community needs, what your solutions might be. Is that something that you think you could participate in? Yeah, of course, because I'm a part of the community. You know, yeah. I am my community. Oh, you, you know, you look at it like this, too. I'll give you a quick uh, example. In East Chester, right, uh, where Pelham Houses is at and all that, well, about like 
four years ago, the police went over there. They arrested 109 youth, locked them up. The whole community was clapping. All the little kids got about 20, 25 years, but you know, they was allegedly supposed to be involved in gang shooting drugs. Is that where they used Facebook and all of the online things to pick these kids out? Yeah, yeah, they did a whole bunch of that social yeah. media. It's like one of the first big social media cases. Well, now, when they took them 109 people, they left. Right now, it's probably 300 kids over there now running wild. You know why? Because when you left, you didn't leave no type of resources, man. A majority of them guys that you arrested was actually the money maker to the house. So when you took them, the mother of them had to automatically go to a shelter. You know, you kicked down doors and waved four fours. But did you come back to see if did any one of these kids had any type of uh, trauma? And they all had trauma. You bust in their house and their babies. You got machine guns. You know, these are the things that they don't come back to see. They just think that they did a great job because they arrested everybody. But how much did you know you solved some things, but you also caused a whole bunch of damage? Yeah, that's never seen. Yeah, they yeah. never see that. Yeah, how many yeah. of those fam how many of those kids lived in NYCHA and the families had to move because they were being thrown out because if a crime is committed by someone in the family, the yeah. whole family has to go, which I think is totally wrong. In that case right there with uh, East Chester, like if it, it was 109 of them got arrested, 107 of them lived in NYCHA. Wow. You know, everybody lived in NYCHA right there. So it was like, uh, you know, it's like, you know, when you look at the rate, the statistics, the statistics on feet on males in jail that's incarcerated is like almost exactly to the nose, the same as females that's in shelters. So one go to the shelter and one go to prison. So the kids suffer both ways. You know, the, the kids suffer, you lose a house, you lost your father, your mom's is, is either got to work or something, but a, a bunch of times, you know, like two, three jobs, but she's in the shelter system now. You know, you lost your whole... But the, those kids have also lost their future because how many people are going to hire these kids? Uh, they can't get jobs unless they've taken programs, education programs in prison. They haven't had any education. Uh, it's it's totally stealing a person's life by doing that. You know, you go back to the uh, from school to prison pipeline, you know, and it, it's, it's like this is systematically set up like this. This ain't by accident that you know that the uh, that the kids go straight from school straight to prison. It ain't by coincidence that the school and the prison is the, is the same color. It ain't by coincidence that when you go in school, they tell you to stand against the wall and don't talk in the hallway. When you're in prison, they tell you to stand against the wall and don't talk in the hallway. It ain't you know it's it's all systematic. When you come in prison, you got to get searched. When you come in school, you got to get searched. It's the same thing, and they. You already build the kids up from when they're in school so they can just ease on in. By the time they get to prison, you already know all the rules and regulations. Just act like you're in school. Only yeah. difference is it ain't a principal. It's a warden. Uh, it's, a, it's a horrible life, and a lot of people just have no awareness that this goes on, or they just refuse to think that that's what's happening. Um, yeah, it most definitely is, man. You know, we all got to wake up as a society, you know, as people. And, uh, you know, as leaders, and if we're going to be leaders, we got to be leaders for real. You know, we're going to uh, educate and help the youth, then you got to do that 100%. That means that you got to put your all into it. You can't be dipping and dabbing because the kids going to see right through it, you know. Just like we seen through it when people was doing it when we was younger. They're going to see through it. So you got to get them your heart. You got to get them your all. Uh, uh. Too many, there's so many people that really are not suffering very much yeah. and unfortunately for people to respond they have to suffer it's just human nature uh, there are very few people that are willing to help others that are in need so we we need to work on that yeah you know it's each one teach one and that's what you know right now we into uh ever in time where people feel that it's each one beat one so everybody want to be bigger than the other everybody want to have more than the next person everybody want to be tougher than the next person but at the end of the day, when it come down to uh, Judgment Day, what did you do for the next person? You know, that's the question. 
It ain't who you beat up, how much jury you had, in, you know, that ain't none of that. It's but what do, what was you doing? You know, what role did you play as the far as helping others and guiding other people on and teaching others? All right. So what's next in your uh, your program? What are you doing uh, uh, these couple well, right of weeks? Now, I got, I'm, I'm in a, a whole bunch of, I sent out a lot of grants right now. So I'm really just waiting because, you know, I got like another four more weeks to teach my high school students. So I'm going to get that out the way. You know, we got a record label coming out. What's the word? So I'm promoting that right now. And is that is that your music or are you having promoting other kids in the in the community? Uh, it's my music and also a lot of kids in the community music. You know, uh, it's the youth. You know, a lot of them I've worked with since they was young. A lot of them, you know, uh, my daughter is part of the, uh, you know, the, the record label. Mm -hmm. Her name is Alexa V. And so... We just working on that level and you know every day we come out and deal with our mental health awareness and parenthood programs and anti-violence programs because you know those are things that just happen daily so that's not really even a job that's something that's just as soon as i come outside somebody gonna tell me yo this is what happened yesterday yo i got a problem with this person or this problem with this vet you know so i'm heads up and then from right there once i hear it you know, I already know. You know, let me go. Let me call this. Let me do this. I just start reacting and moving. Yeah. Well, I wish there were more people in the city like you. Um, so uh, I want to thank you for taking time to, to talk to us about the issues. All the time, and, Mike. You okay. Know, all the time. It's a pleasure to speak with you. It's a pleasure to be on your show. You know, uh, Bronx Speak Out. And, uh, you know, we're always going to keep speaking out because, you know, if we don't, we ain't going to get nowhere. So, you know, yeah. everybody needs to be heard. Everybody deserves to be heard. I, I totally agree with that. And as long as the station is running, you're always welcome to talk. Okay. Okay. So, uh, you know, already know, man, whenever you all get it together, send me the link so I can promote it too. And uh, peace and blessings. That's great. Peace. All Thanks right. Peace out, man. Peace.